Okay, so these are just a few ideas for how to modify the lesson. Please make sure that you watch the previous lesson so that you know exactly what the content is going to be and what the end result is. This video is only options to enhance um, your students' experience. So the first thing that I would do in my classroom, for some students, I would only offer the primary colors red, yellow, and blue. I would remove all the other colors from their view. Um, that being said, I would also, in some cases, take the color that, and I'd say, okay, where would you like to put blue? And then I would outline all of those sections with a blue crayon or a blue marker and then prompt them to color that space in. When mixing colors, first I would discuss how to make each color. How do you make green? Oh, okay, it's red, it's yellow and blue. Then I would take the, only those two colors and then I would prompt the student then to color in layers. Okay, we have one color. Now on top, color the next color. Let's do it again. Yellow and then blue and maybe even do it again depending how it goes. I would also remind the students to not press too hard because I know we have a lot of hard pressers in these groups. So I would remind them not to press too hard to use a light touch. Um, the next thing I would do is if a student is painting, I would take a crayon. So if we were going to paint red, I would take the red crayon and I would outline the section with a nice thick red because the wax of the crayon will resist going out of the space. And then in that case, after that, then the child can more easily paint inside that section. Now, not all of these modifications are for all students. So if you think that your child can paint this without being outlined, then your child should be painting this without it being outlined. Um, but this is for students that might need a little bit of an extra assistance in, in getting these spaces painted or colored. Okay, so if I were to use paint, and you don't have to use paint, I know we have a lot of um, painters in our groups. Take the paint, and what I do in the classroom is if we're limiting the, the colors that we're using, I would take a piece of masking tape or a piece of painter's tape um, or even a piece of paper, and I would just cover up the colors with the tape that we wouldn't be using. And then that way, we really can't go wrong. We can easily cut, paint in the spaces that with the colors that are required. Um, when your child has finished painting or coloring, if you feel like the drawing quality is lost, then feel free to go back in or prompt your child to go back in and re-outline with black so that you could bring that nice quality back. Because when we're tracing the child's own lines, I think that that really is still, you know, celebrating what he or she can do. But if your child can do it, then ask your child to do to go back in and trace it. Even if it's another day or another session, if they're fatigued or they're kind of just over it, then go back in a couple days later and say, hey, can you trace the eyes of that again? Can you trace those circles again? And then remind, lastly, remind your student when they color on the left side to use the exact same color right after to color on the right side so that we can keep it symmetrically balanced, okay? And as always, I want our students to have fun. I do still need to give them a grade on the content that we're learning. It's so important to me that they're still having fun and they're still being creative. Reach out to me if you need any more assistance, and I'll be happy to help.